For the past two years, the FAA, the Rotocraft Directorate, has put on a course called Auto Rotations Reality Exposed at Heli Expo. Um, we took the opportunity to bring this group of speakers back together again to make this film, and we think it's going to give you the viewpoint of industry experts and people who really understand the auto rotation process. We have a need to explore these things because there's a problem. We have an accident rate every year that includes auto rotation accidents. An auto rotation is a maneuver. And it's a maneuver that I think is fairly well trained in our industry. Force landings is the emergency, and I think it's very poorly trained in our business. In the real event of a force landing, of course, that can happen at any time. And it's sod's law, it's never going to happen uh, over a convenient airfield or nice big clear football field in order to make a, a landing. In training, obviously, we're briefing, we're doing simulated engine failures or auto rotations, so you have a, you know it's coming. It's a whole different scenario if you're out there flying and not expecting it to happen. In a training environment, you're set up. You're expecting. You have your hands on the collective. You have your hand on your cycler. However you're trained, whatever it is that you are prepared to do through proper training is how you will respond. Our goal in this emergency procedure is different than in a practice auto rotation. Our goal is to get the people safely on the ground. The entry into the maneuver sets the tone for the rest of the auto rotation. Proper entry into the auto rotation. Um, that's maintain rotor RPM and attitude. That has to be instinctive. The entry is critical. If, if that's not established, then from that point on, the, he's, he's along for the ride. If you're at a cruise altitude and a cruise airspeed, you have the ability then to trade off that airspeed for altitude and rotor RPM. And so it's critically important that you get the nose up and get your RPM back and save altitude. That way you can now make a smarter decision. You have a second or two to think about where am I going to put this helicopter. It's a smooth application of both collect down collective and off cyclic to avoid this, this nose down pitch attitude that can develop. The helicopter is shown flying at a fast cruise flight with the engine flame out occurs. The pilot immediately reacts with aft cyclic, down collective, and left pedal. As the helicopter begins to descend, the pilot raises the nose to slow to 65 knots. The helicopter descends at 65 knots until the flare is entered by using aft cyclic to raise the nose and decelerate the hel helicopter. The collective is pulled up to cushion the landing while the cyclic is pushed forward to level the helicopter as it lands. The second video demonstrates the outcome of an unsuccessful entry to an auto rotation under the same conditions as the first scenario. In this scenario, the pilot reacted with down collective, but no aft cyclic was added. Without the proper inputs, the time from engine flame out to ground contact was less than five seconds. The helicopter is shown flying at fast cruise flight when the engine flame out occurs. The pilot reacts with only down collective and no aft cyclic. After two seconds, the nose pitches down and ground contact is imminent. In training, you know, the object of the maneuver is to get the aircraft safely on the ground, to learn to get the aircraft on the ground when the engine fails. Um, the problem in these is, you know, you get a little downwind, pull the pitch a little early. There's a variety of things that can go wrong in that maneuver, and we may bang up the aircraft. These, air, these accidents have a fairly low mortality rate, but still there's a lot of accidents. We wreck uh, more helicopters practicing for an event that comparatively rarely occurs. So our focus is on teaching the auto rotations and trying to prevent the accident in a training environment. Start out conservative. Don't let the customer take you outside of your, outside of your comfort zone or your box because you do not ever want to let the customer exceed your own capabilities to, to safely maneuver the aircraft and, and put it down on the ground. This practice auto rotation requires a high degree of concentration and focus on not only the student, but also the flight instructor. Maintaining that focus and that concentration is going to be difficult over a long period of time. And so our focus has been uh, at a point from 100 feet down to 
where we want instructors to make good decisions on when and if to terminate the maneuver. You have to know, again, that 100-foot gate, is the student got the aircraft stabilized? If not, right away, don't even think about it, go around. Now, when you're in flight and this occurs, there's two things you need to know. It's going to happen rapidly. It's going to be a, an, ex, an explosive event, if you will. And you have to get the nose up and the pitch down automatically and enter on a rotation. Never forget that it can happen to you. We always talk about that stage of denial, basically, where the pilot needs to, even though there is a recognition that it's happening, I think there's always this little moment of, you know, it can't be, it's not happening. Well, every time I take off, I go, today's the day, it's going to happen today. And mentally, that gets you in a state that when you hear the first sign of the rotor decaying, you're ready for it. Not like, oh no, not today, I'm not ready. After a pilot obtains their private, commercial, and other advanced ratings, I think they need to make a diligent effort on their own accord to seek training periodically on conducting their emergency procedures. Uh, not only to being current, but ideally being proficient. And I would encourage them to do that for their, as much as they can throughout their flying career. Let's summarize a couple of the key points that we've learned today. There's a big difference between a practice auto rotation and an actual engine failure. And we need to pass on to our students the difference between the two. When you enter into an auto rotation and it's an actual emergency, you've got to have the instant reaction to get the nose up and the collective pitch down and get the aircraft under control. The next point is that all of your maneuvering is designed to do one thing, get you to 100 feet in a controlled environment. You want that last part of your auto rotation to be so routine that you successfully walk away from it. And the bottom line for that is that 100 foot window gives you the right altitude, attitude, and airspeed to successfully complete the auto rotation. And the last point is, sometime in your career, this is going to happen to you. This is a reality that you need to be prepared for, and so do your students.